Hey, how's it going, dudes and dudettes? Brad the Guitar just here. Uh, I normally wouldn't film something like this. It's kind of a simple repair. Um, but I wanted to document it just for the hell of it, because why not? Um, and plus, you know, I mean, we're working on a old Martin guitar, and who doesn't want to see an old Martin guitar worked on? Um, I did want to show something here. I... Uh, I've showed this guitar on the channel before. Uh, before we get started, I want to show you what's happened over the winter. Uh, you can see the, the crack right here. Now, this crack was already there, uh, but this guitar had had some work on it, and it's passed a couple different times, and it had some overspray over these cracks. And this winter, it got kind of dry in my house for the first uh, few days of winter. It just, it just really dried up, and it dried up fast, and I had this thing sitting out on the stand. Oh, also, I replaced the pick guard on this thing recently, too. I uh, had it sitting on the stand, and that, that crack kind of started to open up a little bit, and it sort of cracked the uh, overspray that's on there. I'm not worried about it. it. It's my guitar, and I'm keeping this guitar. So it's not like, you know, I'm that concerned with it or anything. Uh, plus, we had a crack open up briefly on the top here, too. It, it's right here behind the bridge. And, you know, it's hard to tell it because of all the... You know, finish checking. It's like that's a finish crack. That's not an actual wood crack. That's just in the finish. This one, however, right here is actually in the wood, but it's subtle. I don't think it went all the way to the bottom of the wood. It's not like it was, you know, separated widely. It just separated at the very tip top of the wood, and you could see that it had actually happened. So, unfortunate, but what I did was I put it in the case with a humidifier on the sound hole and uh, as soon as I saw it that it was happening I, I mitigated it pretty quickly and it's I think I caught it in time I mean it's it's I don't think it's gonna spread or anything I might cleat it at a later date but that's not what we're gonna do today today what we're gonna do is fix some of this binding that has been coming off for a while um, now these top pieces of binding right here <clears throat> you can see there's a split uh, in the binding and this this might I guess this might be a bit of a tutorial on how to do Identify binding issues and maybe do some binding work But you can see the little bit of split that's right there Now what happens with this binding over the years is it shrinks and as it shrinks It tends to pull away at the waist because that's the point where uh, There's the most stress now if it doesn't crack like this what it will do it'll just put it'll simply pull away like this and you'll have you'll have space right here at the waist on both sides. Um, the wood also will change shape over time too. You know, it'll it'll kind of contract and expand and stuff back and forth. Um, and it doesn't do so at the same rate sometimes as the binding. So you'll get this little waist issue right here on the binding. Now what some past repairer has done is I think what they did on this one was they just put a small slit in the binding right there. And, uh, uh, you know that that allowed them to re to stretch this back down and re-glue it so basically you know it had shrunk that much over time so you can see the space that's right there that's not like a missing piece of binding it's just the fact that the binding has shrunk that much so if you imagine this binding actually connected to that you could see how far up off the waste it would actually be right there you know so that's how much it had shrunk uh, at any rate what we're going to do today is we're just going to uh, glue this piece of binding right here on the top back down um, and we'll kind of show that process and I also want to show you what happened on the other side and if you ever get this problem with the waste binding how to fix it so this side had never actually been split but it had the waste binding issue so you could see the that the binding was separating from the guitar right there at the waist, just like it was up on the uh, top side. Uh, but this one, I actually uh, was able to just separate. So what you do is you just get a knife down in there and you just gently separate it all the way up and around. And you want to come right up. You want to come all the way up into here and separate it all up under the neck heel. And when you do, you should be able to just pull the entire piece of binding basically free. So now what I can do is I can hide my gap up under the uh, neck heel instead of having a big split down here um, at the waist, 
like has been done up here. So it's e it's easier to split it um, and just glue that piece back down. But if you want to keep the binding in all in one piece, which I'm sure you do on your old vintage instruments, uh, definitely you'll want to do it like I did this here. Um, and like I said, I had no antenna of really filming this because I didn't. This is not. It's probably not going to be that good of a video, to be honest. I may even put this over on channel two. Um, I, I often think of, <laughs> I do stuff like this, and then I think to myself, man, I probably should have filmed that, because, you know, there might have been some things to talk about there that people don't know or whatever, but, I mean, stuff on guitars like this, like minor repairs, I've just gotten in the habit of, I just do it, um, because filming a video is often more trouble than it's, you know, it's worth, but this one I might just throw up, like, uh, with minimal editing, maybe even no editing, maybe I'll just stream it, so maybe there's some chance of, like, recovering a you know, a little bit of revenue or something for my time <laughs> that I put into it. But anyway, this is what we're going to use uh, for the binding. This is a uh, uh, Beacon 527 multi-use glue. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description if you want to pick some of this stuff up. It's uh, good stuff for binding. So it's it's not quite the consistency of glue. It's a little bit, uh, or super glue. It's a little bit thicker than super glue. Um, on this binding, the split starts right about back in here, uh, this area right in here. So we're going to start um, back in here. But what we got to do is we got to tape off where it hasn't torn apart from the body yet. So we'll put a, a couple pieces of tape here to hold what is already held in place down. Uh, that's going to allow us to get some glue in there. Also, we want to be ready with some uh, wet rags. Uh, to wipe up any spillage. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get, let's get a damp cloth. I'll tell you a really underestimated tool around the workbench is uh, wet wipes, dude. Wet wipes come in very, very handy. I use them actually to wipe up my bench after doing uh, amp repairs and stuff because, you know, you get you get lead and other heavy metals and stuff that's kind of, you know, from the repair process all the time, kind of accumulating on your bench and your work area. And I have kids in and out of here and stuff too. So I, I try to wipe all that stuff up and I don't want to just wipe it up with a rag or vacuum it and leave all the little bits. You know, I'd rather wipe it up with something that might capture, you know, the stuff and I could throw it away. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's just a shame that that happened, but it is what it is, man. That crack right there is always going to do that over the life of this guitar. It's going to separate and uh, go back together probably again and again multiple times over the life of this guitar. There's there's cracks down here too, and it's just, it's just the way it is. Um, and even sometimes when you cleat them, you know, they'll still break away like this. Uh, I don't think this one is cleated. But that would probably be, that would be the answer to keeping it from, you know, talking at me like that. Because if you were to look at this in time lapse, that probably is what it would look like. It would look like this, this crack basically just talking to you. It'd be one of those fascinating worlds, you know, the unknown world, mysterious world you <clears throat> never see kind of videos. And I just use blue painter's tape for this. Um. Like I said, we're gonna come over here and figure out exactly where this this binding uh, looseness starts, and it looks like it starts right there. So we'll tape up right there. I want to reinforce it with two pieces right there at that spot too, in case I. Not that it really matters. I just. It's not going to rip. Okay. Um, all right. Now, the first thing I want to do is, is kind of remove the some of the old glue that's in here. Uh, so we'll come in, come in with a probably an X-Acto knife, and we'll just scrape along this.
yeah I'm moving the camera around so much I'm almost gonna have to edit but this actually isn't too bad there's not much glue on here really kind of see why it came apart <laughs> Getting into a little bit of glue down here. And the thing, like I said, we really, the thing we really don't want to do is break the binding because that would defeat the purpose of, you know, carefully removing it in the first place. It would just be pretty silly to do that. So, okay. There's always a little pressure at first. I, I'm going to wipe some of that off. Okay, now I'm going to glue the channel more than I am the actual piece of binding. So when I sandwich them, it should go back together anyway. But uh, you see, right, it's going to be really almost impossible to get right down in here. But like I said, the one thing I don't want to do is, is, is break this. And there's definitely going to be some squeeze out in places, so like I said, I definitely want to make sure I get all of that. Don't want a bunch of squeeze out around my binding. This glue is very cement-like. It's not like um, it just it kind of comes off, kind of comes off like uh, I don't know. What's it's, it's almost like the consistency of a booger or something, you know? When you uh, it's a little, it's kind of jelly-like. Let's put it that way. It's very jelly-like. Ew! I can almost hear everyone say. So that helps in the cleanup. You know, if, if there is some squeeze out, um, that will aid in the, in the cleanup afterwards. But this is essentially how you do this part. You just go slowly a little bit at a time. I'm starting uh, back here at this end. And we're just going to get small pieces of the tape. And we're going to work our way up. And make sure that this stuff is flat all the way down. For short runs, you can even turn the tape sideways and get further along if you want. Uh, 
but make sure it is very well seated because that's the whole point of this is so it doesn't come apart again and if it's not seated uh, all the way then you know at some future stage you might have a tendency to catch a piece of clothing on it or something and just rip it back loose and the next time it might break because the uh, because the glue is going to be a little stronger this time And don't overdo it with the glue. I mean, some people think you got to do a whole shit ton of glue, and that's not that's not the case at all. Um, just use enough glue, you know, that it's going to hold it without getting a bunch of squeeze out. You know, you don't want to have to deal with all that squeeze out. Like I said, I know boring video, right? Not not exactly riveting stuff here. This is stuff that. You know, you'll, you're going to see a lot on uh, other guitar channels, which is why I usually, like I said, I usually don't even bother filming this kind of stuff when I do it. It's more of a, uh, I just knock it out and get it get it over with, but why not? I thought in this case I'll just run the camera. It's not every day you do it on an old Martin, especially if you, you know, I'm not... I'm not uh, taking in guitars for repair these days anyway, so it's, you know, it's not like I do a lot of guitar repairs. I could. I used to. I used to do a lot more. Not necessarily on the channel, but I used to do them all the time when I was buying and selling instruments. What's funny is I, I used to do exactly what a lot of other channels have their entire channels built around, which is like buying and selling instruments. Um, and I had so so much amazing content I could have shot over the years, and I've, you know you kind of kick yourself for some of the stuff you know some of the stuff that I bought and sold without even showing another soul. You know what I mean? It's just pretty amazing to think about some of the amazing stuff. But you know, easy come, easy go. Um, got me the down payment on. You know, my house got me the down payment on my rental house, doing all of that over the years. And, you know, I'm, I am thankful um, to the guitar and the instrument and, uh, you know, to the community around the guitar because, I mean, without it, I wouldn't be where I am today. So, all right, uh, that side's done. And we need to do this other side up here on top. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to be particularly precious with this. I'm just trying to knock it out. Let's see. I'm going to turn this around. Though. Like, I like to work. I don't like to work with the guitar up. Stand it up on its side, really, when I can avoid it. That's the only other way to get to that. So let's swap things around here. see I hope so let's get you more like this that way there we go there we go yeah it would have been nice if this was all in one piece then I could um, could do what I did over here and move the gap up here just a much much better place to put the gap if you ask me all right now this piece of binding looks like it's loose back to right here so we'll go ahead and shore that up with a piece of tape right there on the boundary of that and that's basically key to not pulling up because I mean sometimes if you start messing around with binding like this it's already loose uh, before you know it uh, you know, if you 
pull it slightly too hard, it'll like give right here. And then this whole, you know, you'll, you'll soon find that the length that you're going to have to do is like doubled just like that. <laughs> it can happen. I've had it happen. All right. Um, uh, there's not much glue in here, but there is some glue. I think I might have even glued this at one point in the past. Um, if I, I, I don't, I was thinking maybe when I got this, this was a bit loose already, and I, I think I might have put some glue in here. I can't remember. We'll scrape out what we can here. Wonder how many people are already saying you're doing that wrong. <laughs> I'm sure somebody has got a comment. What it's really funny, uh, you know. I mean, it wasn't probably 20 years ago. I mean, really, 20 years ago, uh, you didn't have widespread video like you do now. So it wasn't like it was real easy to look over someone's shoulder and see this sort of thing done. It wasn't like you could just go online to some website, hit play on a video, and be an instant expert in how, how you're supposed to do something. Uh, like this, for instance. You know, it's... A, it's a, there are many, many ways to do the same thing, and a lot of people have found over the years that there are many ways and many different ways that work. And some people, you know, when you find a way that works for you, that's uh, that you find easy to accomplish, that you've had success with in the past on a regular basis, it, you know, you don't want to necessarily change your ways because some newfangled way of doing it properly, you know, according to some uh, online guru who usually is trying to sell you some tool, you know, um, <laughs> that will help you do it, you know, more efficiently or whatever. But at the end of the day, there are a lot of people trying to sell a tool. Um, I'm not saying that they're not also great luthiers and uh, they don't have lots of great things to say, but there are a lot of different ways to do things. And, um, you know, you should keep that in mind before you start criticizing every little thing everybody does when they try to show you, you know, something that they're, they're up to. It just seems really really silly and I think it's a bit toxic it's one of the it's one of the toxic things about um, the repair community in general and that, that also goes for amps that might even especially go for for amps because I think there is an honor amongst amp techs it's like an unspoken rule you just don't you don't really go after you know other techs and their work really uh, at least I don't do that um, if I see something that looks a bit shoddy I might say hey that's a bit shoddy could have been done a bit differently um, and I know uh, you know there's been a couple cases where uh, I'm sure other techs have you know given me the benefit of the doubt on something and didn't overly criticize something I screwed up on too you know so it's a uh, there's kind of a unspoken rule as far as you know, amp text goes um, that we don't, we just don't bash each other in public like that. It's just not something that you do. You know, I, I, I think it's, I think it's fair to do with manufacturers. 
original equipment uh, OEMs. Um, you know, because a lot of times they're selling something to the public, and the public has no idea how what a bill of goods they've been sold. You know, they have no idea how bad this thing actually is designed, or how badly put together it is. You know, and and they don't realize that hey, you just bought something that you can't really ever get fixed if it breaks. You know, so yeah, I think it's kind of it's fair game on the OEMs, but not uh not other techs. But not I, it, that doesn't seem to be the rule on with with Luthier so much. It seems like maybe maybe not the Luthiers themselves, but. Uh, Certainly, certainly the audiences. The audiences, I think, are the the real issue. It's like, oh, I can't believe it. You know, I can't believe he did that. Well, you don't really know the circumstances of how the thing was at the time that it crossed somebody's bench. You know, you don't know the circumstances of the sell. Was was it a quick flip for somebody? You know, did they just buy it so that they uh, uh, because they already knew somebody that was gonna. Uh, was going to buy it and they just had to, you know, slap down a piece of binding, for instance, or, you know, you just really don't know the circumstances, but there's a, I think what I'm trying to get at here is, uh, it seems like every time I do any kind of Luthery work or any kind of tech work, you know, you get, I get criticism of the way I'm doing something. Oh, you should have used this. Oh, you should have used that. You should have done this. You should have done that. And that's perfectly fine if it's a helpful suggestion, like if it's constructive criticism, like, hey, man, uh, hey, I've, I've been doing this on mine, and uh, anytime I've had that problem and it works a hell of a lot better, try it next time. You know, that's that's one way of saying it. So it's not like, hey, man, you're an idiot. You're just, I can't believe you did that. You're not a professional. Like some dude came along and he said, uh, he left a, on the last repair video I did for a guitar, he left a comment that was so snarky. I was just like, you know, it's just one of those comments that makes you almost almost want to give up doing it. You know what I mean? It's just it's one of those that you get some some every now and then. It's just like is this really where we are? Like do we really have to go there? Um you know, it makes you want to just say screw it. But what he said was, he said uh he said you need to watch this channel more and learn a thing or two, something like that. And he like linked me to another YouTuber's um, Luth Luthery channel, and it's one that I I watch and I respect and I and I like the guy's work with a few videos that I've seen of his. So it's not like the guy is out of bounds, you know, showing me some some idiot who doesn't know what he's doing or something, you know. Uh, but it's just it's just insulting. It's like, and the thing is, like the results of what I did to the guitar were perfectly fine. It's like it, everything came out fine, you know. I uh, but. It's just, you know, the insinuation that, oh, you can't do it. You need to watch another YouTuber or something was just, man. I was like, wow, <laughs> dude. <laughs> That's like the one of the highest insults you can give a YouTuber. You need to go watch this other guy who could teach you to do it. You know, it's like, dude, man. I, I, I'm just showing what I'm doing. I'm not even in teaching mode here. I'm not saying even that you should do it in the same way that I'm doing it. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. You know, just bring you along for the ride because it's entertainment. You know, this isn't even really a how-to channel for that matter. I'm just, I'm just, you're just along for the ride, man. You're just looking over my shoulder. This is stuff I've been doing. I've been playing guitar for, this year makes 30 years. Okay, so well over half of my life. I started when I was, uh, I started playing when I was, 13, 14 years old. I was at the end of my 13th year. Uh, and, you know, I've been repairing guitars or f fixing them or fiddling with them, you know, almost as long. You know, def certainly within the first few years, I was already setting up my own instruments and doing minor repairs and things like that. So it's, you know, I just the insinuation that you just don't know what you're doing. You're just, you know, to somebody like me who's been doing it for longer than I can even remember, it's just so fucking insulting you know and it's all because it's like you have such easy access to all of the this massive library of knowledge now and videos and all this stuff 
everyone's an expert. You know, everyone's an armchair expert. Even if you've never put your damn hands on a guitar in this way to fix something, you're already an expert and you know how it's supposed, supposed to be done. So anyway, we're going to let this glue dry. It shouldn't actually take that long. This stuff is uh, pretty pretty fast setting but like I said it's it's um uh, it's very tacky stuff it's it's um, very boogery I guess for like a very gel like gelatin like when it sets so um, it doesn't pull away and crack the way that super glue does now if you were to, a lot of people use super glue on binding and stuff but that's but super glue has a tendency to you know how it gets brittle and cracks and it basically turns to dust even uh, this stuff doesn't do it like that. But yeah, I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check this stuff out. But yeah, just thought I'd bring you guys along for that. That should do it for this video. And for now, we will see you all later.